Hello there, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Once Upon a Coma. I'm working on that right now. I also made a game called Pinstripe that's on console and Steam and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I make indie games. I've made it a living for about three years now. I've been making indie games for 10 years. And there's so many things that I did in the beginning of the indie game development thing, uh, the indie game part of my career that I wish I had known. So many huge mistakes. Um, so here are top six mistakes that I made as an indie game developer. Um, are you ready? I hope you're ready. I'm ready. So the first thing is, one, I never researched a thing. I never like did planning or researching or concepting. I just jumped right into making games. Part of the reason why I did this was because I think I was just afraid I didn't have time to research. I always felt anxious and I always felt uh, a sense of urgency. Um, and I know how this feels. Like a lot of you are students or working full-time jobs and you feel like you've only got like two hours in the day to actually work on your game. Um, believe it or not, I think you should spend more time researching and learning and planning and concepting um, than you actually do producing your game. This will pay off in the long run, I promise you. Um, building a scalable game with proper documentation, really good code is way more important than getting things done. Um, because if you're, like if you're building the Titanic and it's got holes in it, it's gonna sink on launch. So you wanna make sure that you're being consistent and really planning um, properly and researching. Spend some time on the Unity uh, documentation um, pages and on their tutorial pages, or if you're using Unreal, uh, on their tutorial pages. Uh, spend time watching videos. Um, watch my videos. There's also some great YouTubers out there who um, cover indie game topics as well. All right, the second mistake I made when I started making indie games is I purchased tools way too early. And I think this was part of, uh, part of the reason was because I wanted to feel like I was being a professional. So I was really young and, and kind of naive, so I would just go and buy tools um, just because I wanted to feel like I was, I don't know, making the right steps in the direction of being an indie game developer or something. I don't really know exactly what I was thinking. But have you ever felt like you, you're not doing what everyone else is doing? Like you don't have a really cool studio or you're not dressing the way that other indie game developers are dressing or acting the way they're acting and using the right software or the software that they're using. Um, this, is, this is just not something you need to be thinking about. Uh, just think about making your game, being creative, um, staying disciplined. I think the most valuable thing you can do is just be disciplined. Um, so when I first started making um, Pinstripe, and this was almost five or six years ago, uh, I was really, really disciplined, but I was also very insecure. And so one of the first things I did is I felt like it was important for me to own Unity Pro. And at the time you had to spend $3,000 to get Unity Pro. So I spent $3,000 on Unity Pro and then waited five years before I actually utilized the license. Um, and by the time the five years was up, it wasn't even valid anymore because Unity had changed their subscription model. So there's a lot of free um, options out there for you to start making games. You don't have to spend $3,000 to start making games. You can download free trials and they're everywhere from Adobe all the way to Unity. Uh, if you're working in your bedroom, that's okay. Or your dorm, or if you're me, I was working in the library of Clemson University. Um, all by myself, I wasn't partying with my friends or hanging out with friends. I was just working in the basement of the library on my, uh, my laptop. So. Anyone can make indie games. You don't have to buy certain things to do it. Eventually you will need to buy stuff, but when you're starting making games. All right. The third mistake that I made was I overvalued indie game competitions. Um, look, I get it. Like IGF and IndieCade and E3 and G GDC and PAX are really cool. And to be able to get into those competitions is cool and it's a little bit valuable and you meet people and you can get the little award laurels on your game. That's really, really fun. And, and I've been part of that and I've done that and I'm gonna continue to do that. But don't let it freak you out. Don't let it um, make you insecure about your game. A lot of times I've, I've heard this um, from several judges who have worked at IGF and Indiecade. Um, a lot of times there's not, it's not an agenda, but it's, there's, there's a lot of different factors that go into your game getting into a competition. So just because it didn't get into a competition doesn't mean that your game isn't good or that it's not um, going to be successful. 
Um, I can't tell you how many rejection letters I got from IGF um, and how oftentimes it would tear me down emotionally so much so that I wanted to quit making the game. I think it's way more important for you, especially in your first game, to just finish it rather than worry about what these judges are saying. Um, I've learned to, to not trust any authority figure um, in any part of my life. I, I'm always skeptical about advice and about critique. Um, you always want to make sure that you're, you're not letting any insecurity that you have about your game um, validate any critique that you're receiving. Um, try and receive critique, um, whether that's in the form of what your friends are saying about your game or whether it's a rejection letter from a studio or uh, indie game competition. Always make sure you're taking that critique um, as objectively as you can. Um, you don't want to quit making your game. Finish your game, that's the most important thing. All right, the fourth mistake I made was I had a lust for money. I would lust after money, and this is, sounds kind of extreme, but I don't actually know if it's that extreme to say it like that, because in hindsight, looking back, um, I was such a worry wart. Um, I cared so much about security and financial stability and money. Um, I can't tell you, tell you how many times I ran the numbers, right? This was before Pinstripe launched. I would write out exactly who was gonna play the game on YouTube and how many plays or how many views that would have, and if there was a 3% conversion rate, how many sales would that translate to, and I would have spreadsheets and projections and blah, blah, blah. Dude, good luck projecting anything with your first indie game, okay? Just, here's a good projection for you. Plan on making no money, and I know that sounds extreme and I hate to burst your bubble, but if you wanna make indie games, you really have to do it because you love it. Um, your first game is likely not to make a lot of money, that's okay. That's the way it goes for most indie game developers. Um, just enjoy making games to the best of your ability. I think a good way to um, sort of get rid of this risk of making no money is to pursue publishers. And that is my fifth mistake that I made, is I didn't pursue financial support, um, especially early on when I started uh, making games. I spent three, no, I spent four years working on Pinstripe, um, without any financial support from anybody. And, you know, this is tough because I had to work a full-time job. I was married. Um, I had just gotten married out of college and uh, I had a full-time job. And so I had to find two hours somewhere in the day, every day, um, to be able to continue working on Pinstripe. And this is really, really tough, um, mainly because first, like our first point, um, you don't really want to spend time planning and researching and concepting and doing business admin things because you just want to get the damn thing done. Um, and this will really hurt its production. So you need to find financial support. Publishers are, you know, they're kind of a necessary, I wouldn't say evil, but you know what I'm saying. Um, they, they give you money, they provide you funding. And they're able to take that risk, um, that financial risk that maybe you're not uh, able to do. They'll also help you with marketing, um, which is great. Now, if you're working on your second or your third or your fourth project, I highly recommend not working with a publisher if you don't have to. Um, there's really no reason to do it. If you know how to market a game and you have the money to make a game um, and work on it full time. But publishers are a great alternative when you don't have funding. Uh, another thing you can do about funding is Kickstarter. Um, so I have a video that I made about Kickstarter. You can take a look at the link in the description uh, about how to actually make a, a quality Kickstarter campaign. Don't be afraid of Kickstarter. Um, I always thought that if I fail on Kickstarter, it's gonna be public and everyone's gonna laugh at me. It is public, uh, it stays up, but it's not a huge deal. I think most of the internet and hopefully your family and friends will understand if you failed. Um, dude, it's better to fail at a, pursuing a dream than, uh, than to not fail at all. Um, and that is absolutely true because failure always leads to success. Um, so, so just pursue financial um, support wherever you can, uh, especially for your first game, because again, you wanna have that full time, uh, the ability to work full time on your game. So the sixth and final uh, mistake that I made when I was working on, when I first started making indie games was I didn't build an audience. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, I didn't build an audience and I worked five years on Pinstripe and I didn't spend any of that time focusing on, hey, maybe I could build my audience so that when I actually launch Pinstripe on Steam, 
or console, uh, this army of followers that I have will help make it um, have a big splash. <clears throat> so a really cool thing that you can do um, is every day when you're working on your game, spend about 10 to 15 minutes uh, providing some sort of update on your project, um, an animated GIF or an image or something, a screenshot, and use a tool called Hootsuite. Um, and I think you have to pay a subscription fee, a yearly subscription fee, but it's not a terrible price, uh, especially for the value that you get. Basically, Hootsuite allows you to post on all social media platforms at once. Um, do this every day with a link to your game on the Steam page, um, like a, the preview link, uh, so that people can wishlist your game. Ask people to follow you. Um, ask for retweets. You know, Don't be afraid to ask for retweets. Just be careful um, how often you do this. But always have a call to action every single day for your project and build up your audience. So my goal is to have 20,000 wish lists for Once Upon a Coma on launch day, 10,000 Twitter followers, 10,000 Instagram followers, uh, 25,000 subscriptions on YouTube. Just don't undervalue the importance of building an audience um, and a following that will follow you from project to project to project. A lot of us think that we need to invest a ton of marketing money uh, into um, launching our games, uh, and that is good to do, is invest some form of a marketing budget. But I think the most valuable thing you can do is have a built-in audience ready to support you when you launch your game. All right, guys, I actually have two more mistakes that I wanna share with you. Uh, but in order to take a look at those mistakes, you've got to pay me your money. Uh, head on over to Patreon, subscribe. It's just like $10 a month and you can hear all of my videos and the full length videos. Every video I do has some extra tips at the end of the video. So head on over to Patreon. It's super important to me and supports me and my family. So thank you so much, guys. Hit the subscribe button. Right. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to write below in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, thanks, guys. Bye.